So today we're going to be having a look at internal versus external wastegates. Most factory turbo cars come with an internal wastegate setup. Basically you've got a can with a spring, a diaphragm, a boost reference and the arm here that controls the position of the wastegate flap. And that controls the boost just fine on a factory setup. So when would you actually need to go external? There's a lot of different reasons, but one example is packaging. So let's say you've gone from a GTR twin turbo setup to a large single turbo. It makes more sense to run an external wastegate because it's a lot easier to package. And you also have a bit more room once the twin turbo setup is out of the way. The other reason is a lot of larger turbos, when you're upgrading the turbo, they don't necessarily come with an internal wastegate on them. So even though the internal wastegate does have its place and it does do a good job, there are some other technical reasons why you might need to go to an external wastegate. Uh, a good example is if you are using an external gate, you can actually route the dumped gases to feed them back into the exhaust pipe downstream of the catalytic converter or, um, or even dump it straight out to atmosphere if you're using it in a place that would allow such things. The main reason you do that is to get the turbulence away from the chamber behind the, uh, the turbine outlet. So in this case, with the internal wastegate, where the wastegate dumps the gases generally feeds pretty much straight into the exit of the turbine. So you can get turbulence which creates back pressure and it's not generally the best for performance. It's good but it's not great. So using the external you can pretty much get rid of those gases. If you dump them out to atmosphere then you're also freeing up the exhaust pipe to carry just what's been dumped by the turbine. So here's an example of an external wastegate. This is the GFB EX50 that I've developed. One of the other benefits of this over the internal setup is that you can easily change the spring rate. So your base boost pressure, pop the cap off, put in a different spring and then you're ready to go. The other thing is because an external wastegate has two ports you can use this top port for a number of different reasons. One good example is uh, on a drag car, for example, where you use two-step launch control. There's so much popping and banging and backfiring in the exhaust while you're on the start line that it generally tends to blow the wastegate valve open. Uh, what a lot of racers will do is apply CO2 from a bottle to the top of the diaphragm and that is going to hold the wastegate shut. So while you're sitting there on the two-step and the banging, popping and everything going on, you can keep the wastegate shut to make sure you get all of the boost possible for launch. Then when you relieve the CO2, then you can start controlling boost. The other thing you can do is you can even use the top port for uh, additional boost control. So let's say you want to bleed everything off from the bottom here to get as high as you can on the boost pressure, but the spring won't let you go any further. You can actually run a four-port solenoid system, which allows you to pulse not only the pressure going to the bottom, but the top as well. So effectively, you're sending boost pressure to the bottom, then to the top, then to the bottom, then to the top. And the more you give to the top, the more it's going to push the valve closed, and that's going to get the boost higher than you would if you just used the bottom port alone. So those features alone make the, uh, the external wastegate a more enticing proposition for those that want to tune the boost to do a lot of different things. So drag strip circuit racing, if you have some very specific needs for your boost control, that really is the way to go.